This video is about the power node in Unreal Engine materials. I'm gonna explain what it is, what it's used for, and how we can use it. So let's do it. I've created a master material with all the functions necessary for your projects. You can download it for free on my website. Link in the description below. Right click in the material graph and search for power. You can also left click while holding E on the keyboard to add it. It has two inputs and one output. In the details tab, we only have access to this constant exponent value. It's the same as the exponent value here on the node. We can also connect other nodes to it, like textures or constants. When we do that, the input on the node disappears, and the input in the details tab will be disabled. Also, we can use this section here to add a description to the node. So what does it do? It takes whatever we feed it, and raises it to the power of the exponent. In other words, it takes the base input, multiplies it by itself exponent times, and outputs the result. Let's add another constant to see what I mean. Connect this one to the base input, set it to 0.7, and place this one here. I'll set the exponent value to 3, and connect the power node to the base color input. Now it means that 0.7 will be multiplied by itself 3 times, 0.7 by 0.7 by 0.7. It will be 0.343. So if I set this other constant to this value and connect it to the base color, the final result shouldn't be any different. And as you can see, it isn't. There's only one exception, and that's when the input value is negative. If I hover the mouse on top of the node, the tooltip says that base value must be positive. Values less than 0 will be clamped. That's why when I set the constant to minus 1, the output will be black. Because the power node clamps it to 0, and 0 to the power of 3 is 0. But if I multiply minus 1 by itself, the result will be white. Because minus 1 multiplied by minus 1 is 1. If we pass values with multiple channels, each channel is altered separately. I'll add two vector 3s to demonstrate that. Move the constants to make some room. Set this one to 0 0.7, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4. So the result should be 0 0.343, 0 0.027, and 0 0.064. Let's compare them. Yeah, they're the same. If we connect a constant 1 to the base and a constant 3 to the exponent input, the power node ignores the G and the B channels and only uses the R channel as the exponent. So if I set this to 0.6 and this one to 3, 2 and 4, the output should be 0.6 to the power of 3 which is 0.216. We can connect textures or constants to both inputs. In that case, each channel is altered separately. Let's connect a vector 3 to the base input and set it to 0 0.7, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 and set this one to 1, 2 and 3. The output will be 0 0.7 to the power of 1 which is 0 0.7, 0 0.3 to the power of 2 which is 0 0.09 and 0.4 to the power of 3, which is 0.064. If you are not familiar with channels, watch the component mask video. Both inputs should have the same number of channels. For example, we can't connect a vector 3 and a vector 2 at the same time. It'll give us an arithmetic error. We can use the append node here, or the component mask node here. but they just add or mask channels. The only real exception is when we have a single channel constant or a scalar. Now that we know how the power node works, let's see how we can use it in our materials. But before getting to that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also join our community on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. The links are in the description below. Let's first quickly go over what luminosity is and how power affects it. 
Basically, every channel is made up of different values between 0 and 1. 0 and anything below is black, 1 and anything above is white, and decimals between 0 and 1 are different shades of gray. These different shades are then put on top of each other in 3 different channels or RGB to give us the illusion of color. I go more in depth about this topic in these two videos. Their links are in the description below. The colors and textures we use in Unreal have values between 0 and 1. I'm gonna use the graph in this website to show you how power affects those values. Let's zoom in on the graph until we see the 0 to 1 range. My formula is x to the power of k. x is a value that increases linearly and we can control k with this slider. Right now it is set to 1. So the output is the same value as x. And here on the graph we can see that it is linear. When I increase the k value, you can see that the output will become a curve. It's not linear anymore. It starts at 0, 0, intersects the 1, 1 point here and goes on. As I increase the k value, the line becomes more curvy, but 0 and 1 don't change. If I compare it with the linear line, we can see that brighter values are slightly dimmed, but darker values are drastically decreased. The result will seem like a sort of contrast adjustment. This property of power is what we use in our materials. When the k value goes below 1, the curve goes into the opposite direction and the contrast can be decreased. Let's add this noise texture from the starter content and the scalar parameter. I'll name it contrast. Set the default value to 1 and connect them like this. Apply and save. Then assign it to this cube to see how it works. When I increase the value, the contrast increases, and when I decrease it, the contrast decreases. When the exponent value is set to 0, it becomes completely white, because any value to the power of 0 is 1, and 1 is, well, white. We can also use the texture as the exponent. That would make it more complex, but the whole idea is the same. So let's connect this color to the base input and the noise texture to the exponent input to see the result. Apply and save. You can see that where the noise texture is black, it becomes white, because black is 0, and any value to the power of 0 is 1, and where the noise texture is white, it stays the same color, because white is 1, and any value to the power of 1 is the same value. The gray values will produce the other shades. Now I can use another power node on the noise texture. To duplicate the power node, set the scalar value to 1, then connect them like this. Apply and save. Now I can change the way it looks. Let's see what it looks like if I use this pebble texture as the exponent. Most of the time I use it after a multiply node to control the contrast of my textures. Add a multiply node and a scalar parameter. Name it brightness. Also let's move the contrast scaler and the power node to here and delete this one. Set both scalers to 1, connect them like this and connect it to the base color input. Apply and save. Now I can use these two parameters to control the look of the texture. Let's add this brick texture and try it on this one too. And that's the power note. Click here for more Unreal stuff. And thank you so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe and join our community on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. So, see you in the next one.